Let's solve this question. This is about country C where we are measuring the number of transactions that were made by various non-cash methods. And this is data which is presented for two different years, 2006 and 9. You can see them here on the x-axis. And basically the different methods that have been talked about, the non-cash methods, there are four of these, debit card, paper check, credit card, auto transfer. And you see all of these, all four of these for each year. For 2006 also you see four bars with all four of these patterns. For 2009 also you have all four of these bars. So this single graph we'll use to read about all of the methods also about both of the years also. Every transaction which we do not see here they're saying that was made with cash. So let's just take an example to understand this. Say I'm looking at 2006 only and I want to see how many non-cash transactions were made in country C in 2006. Suppose I don't divide it into any, any types like this and I just ask the total. That is going to be 39 plus 24 plus 22 plus 20. What is the unit? It's number of transactions in millions. So those many millions will be the total number of non-cash transactions. But if I say only want to know credit card transactions then that is equal to how much? Just read this value, it's 22 million transactions. Similarly, for 2009, how many debit card transactions? 24 but million, 24 million transactions. So very easy to read this graph. We've understood how we're reading this. Let's just see what the question is asking now. Okay, here we go. Let's read this carefully. It's a long statement. If the total value of all credit card transactions in 2009 was 10% more than the total value in of credit card transactions only in 2006 then. So there is an if condition and then you have a then. First, I need to understand what the if condition itself is. So I'm going to put this here in a more visual form. So I'm talking about total value and I'm only talking about credit card. We are comparing 2006 and 2009 and 2009 was 10% more than 2006. That means if in 2006 it's 100x, then in 2009, this is 110x. This is what the total value, remember, of the credit card transactions. Now read the question further. Then the average or arithmetic mean value of credit card transactions increased by dash percent from 2006 to 2007. What is it in which you're trying to see the percent change from 2006 to 7? It's the average value of credit card transactions. Now, this is important. What do you mean by average value? Well, they've already talked about total value here in this given information. Now they're talking about another thing, which is the average value. Average value of a transaction means you take the total value of all transactions, you divide that by the number of transactions. So that you get how much is the value per transaction. That's your average. So I'm putting the formula here also. Average value simply equal to total value of credit card transactions divided by number of transactions. I'm not writing credit card again and again because we've put that here once and for all that this is all happening for credit card only. Now we just saw the graph above and I know there is one thing that the graph gives me which is the number of transactions. So this thing I'm going to get from the graph total value I have an expression for here, we have to somehow combine the two pieces of information to first of all find these two average values. Once you find these two average values, then you will see what is the percent change and that will give you the final answer. So it's very important that you understand why you're finding average values, how you're finding it and then what will you do with it at the end. So let me take this to the graph because your first goal is to get number of transactions. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Perfect. So here I've organized the table slightly well. Total value here, transactions I'll get. Then we'll go to average value. So transactions in 2006, you know, credit card is this pattern. So 2006, in fact, this is the example I took also. This is 22 million. So I'm just going to put 22 here. I'll write million here in the unit separately. Similarly, for credit card transactions 2009, I see the number is 20. And here you go. Now, how will you write average value? You already know the formula based on the discussion we had. It's simply the division of these two things. My 
first thing here is 100x divided by 22 and the second one is 110x by 20. And now these are the two things between which I have to see my percent change. So I'll now take this back to the question because I want to keep my choices in front. Perfect, we are back. So it already says it's a percent increase. So you don't have to think about which one out of these is greater or smaller. You simply apply a formula for percent increase, which is going to be the difference between these two values. Obviously, the 2009 value is greater because of the increase. You'll take the difference, you'll divide that by the original value times 100. I'll just do this calculation real quick. You also pause the video, try it and then play to see what I have. And here I'm done. After, after taking the LCM here, getting 220, just combining the fractions. After simplification, a lot of things got cancelled out and I came here to 21%. Now, where do I see that? That is the third choice here and we're done. So, interesting question. Let's look at another part. There's one more question here. Then we'll summarize everything nicely. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we apply translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. This one is talking about number of transactions of something. It is saying the number of debit card, paper check, these are actually all four of the types we saw. The number of which type of these transactions increased by 25% from 2006 to 2009. So you'll go back into the graph and you'll see which ones out of these, which out of these four categories really first of all showed an increase in the number of transactions. Second of all, it should be an increase by 25%. If it's not even an increase, then forget about increase by 25%, right? So how will I see whether there is an increase or not in the first place? Obviously, if the number of transactions is increasing, the bar for that particular category should be taller in 2009 compared to 2006, since it's the height of the bars that I'm using to measure number of transactions. Now, when you look at them one by one, debit card transactions, they've actually lowered in number because the height of the bar is coming down. So debit card is out of the picture. Then you look at these gray bars. Yes, this one has increased, which is paper check. So this is one contender. Then if I look at credit, card again this has come down from 22 to 20 this is also out then 20 to 17 this is also out which means the first condition only itself that it has to be an increase in the first place that was enough for me to get to one out of these four methods i didn't have to even think about the 25 percent this is how you have to really break things down nice and slow so that you don't just start overdoing and start calculating every percent change from here since most of them three out of four of them are not even increases they are out in the first place place only, which means it's only paper check which had an increase. So that has to be the one that had your 25% increase as well. Now let's summarize everything nicely. So here we began by understanding the data set, which was pretty easy to understand. We just took examples and reading this graph was also very easy. It just had everything in one place. So that clarity was important. You should be able to find both the years here. You should be able to find all four of the categories here. How are you reading and everything? Then when we went into our statements, the two parts we wanted to find, step stem one, this first question statement was a lot more intense than the second one. This is where we first had to calculate average value of a transaction in credit card cases and then find percent increase also. In, in in the first place itself, finding the average value required you to come up with this formula to connect all of the things that you know, bring in your conceptual understanding and see that this total value that they are talking about has to be combined with what the graph is giving to first of all, get the average value numbers. After getting the average values numbers, of course, it was just calculation of how the percent change works. Again, conceptual understanding. Then when you came into the second one, this is about visualization clearly, where we broke down the entire thing that we wanted into two pieces that you wanted number of transactions to increase by a certain percent. So just the fact that it has to be an increase helped you narrow down from four to one options. And that was that was done here already. You didn't even have to think about 25. This part really teaches us the importance of understanding your data set so well so that you're not overwhelmed with information. You don't overdo things. You do only as much as is needed and get to the answer in the most efficient way.